guys, in this lesson I'm going to go ahead and show you how to rig a piston. It's going to be a very basic geometry and mesh we're going to be creating, but you'll just get the concept of how exactly you can go about rigging a piston. So let's go to Create, Polygon Primitives, click Cylinder. I'm going to press Command D two more times so we have a total of three cylinders. This guy, one of them I'm going to move it up, hold down J in order to rotate in increments of 15, and scale them down just so we have a wheel just like so. Now we're going to select the other two at the same time, scale them down just like so, so we have like a tube shape. We're going to move them about here and we're going to scale it up a little bit, scale it just like so. Now we're going to move both of them down and now we're going to select just one of them and move it up. Now for this one we're going to scale it so the radius is smaller than the other one. I'm going to turn off x-ray just so you can see better. Just so it's like an actual piston. This is the base where the piston goes into. Now I'm going to select this geometry, go to vertex and move these vertices down. But just to show you, like, let's assume these vertex were all the way up here for the piston. Whenever this geometry, this cylinder starts like going around the actual wheel, as soon as it gets out of place and up here, it just pops out and you can see that the piston is not continuous. So these vertices, you want to put them as much, all the way down as much as you can. Now, next step is to move these pivot points all the way up. So for this geometry, it's going to be up here, for example. I'm just holding down D and V to snap it to the vertice right here in the center. DMV for the bottom one, and we're good to go. Let's actually snap them just here, just to be a little bit more neat. And this one, DMV, in order to snap it to that point. Now we're going to select all three geometries, go to Edit, Delete by Type History, and Modify Freeze Transformations. Now, the next step is we're going to be using point constraints, aim constraints, and locators. Remember, locators are basically groups, but they're just visual representations, and whenever you're rigging pistons, it just helps much more. Now, I'm going to go ahead and actually move this guy a little bit lower, just like so, and move these verts up, just so we can see a bigger difference whenever we do, do our piston rig. I'm going to go to object mode, freeze transformations again. Now, we're going to create locator and we're gonna put this first locator right about here inside of the wheel. Now we're gonna press Command D or Control D and duplicate this one right here. Again Command D or Control D and move this one all the way down here. Now the next step is to select this locator that's on the wheel and shift click the piece of geometry and press P. This basically does so whenever the geometry is being rotated, the locator is being followed. The locator follows because it's a child of that geometry. Now, the next step that we're going to go ahead and want is make this locator the parent of this geometry. So we're going to select this cylinder, shift click this locator and press P. So wherever this locator goes, the geometry follows. And same exact thing for this guy. Select the geometry, shift click the locator and press P. Now, Let's do the point constraint first. So all we're going to basically do is select this locator that's on the wheel, shift click this locator that's on the top cylinder, go to constraint, and we're going to go to the option box for point, and keep your maintain offset on, because if it's off, it's going to go straight to it. We actually want to keep a distance between the two. So again, whenever this wheel is being rotated, that locator is going to follow. but we still have a little bit more work to do in order for like the rig to be complete. So the next step is to click our click our locator, for example, right here, and then shift click our geometry. Now what we're gonna do is go to constraint aim. So now we gotta click this geometry, go to the attribute editor and go to the aim constraint, and we know we gotta put negative one right here on Y. Press enter. Now we're going to click this locator right here, shift click the bottom geometry, just like so, and we're going to go to constraint aim as well. 
let's select the bottom cylinder again. This is the bottom one. We're going to change this to 0, change the aim vector to 1. So once you got this going on, you're going to rotate this main wheel. And you got yourself a piston rig. I'm going to turn off x-ray just so you can see better. So basically what we did is, let me zero this guy out just to reiterate. We have a point constraint between these two locators in order to keep its distance. And since the locator right here for the wheel is a child of this cylinder, of this wheel, it's always going to follow the rotation of the wheel. Now, since this is point constrained to this locator, it's always going to try to keep its distance with the maintain offset on, just like so. So whenever the wheel is being rotated, it's going to try its best to always follow along it. Now, the point of these two locators on the top and bottom is in order to select this geometry and this locator and actually have an aim constraint, because once I started rotating this wheel without the aim constraints, it was just being straight. This top cylinder was just straight. But since we have the aim constraint, that allows us to actually have like an aim of this being rotated here, and then this geometry being rotated and aiming towards this locator and this geometry aiming to the bottom locator. As you see, the rotates are locked on this geometry and the same for this geometry. So it's basically this guy is aiming over here and this one's aiming over here. Now, the reason to put the pivot points on the top and this one on the bottom is just to have better results of like, this is actually aiming all the way from down here to this top locator and this pivot point is aiming all the way to this bottom locator. And we're actually as well using this same locator that this geometry is aiming at in order to do a point constraint between this locator and the other one of the wheel in order to actually have that influence of whenever the wheel rotates, it follows. And that's like the most basic type of piston rig you can do. It just all depends on like the geometry you're given from the modeler and what exactly you have to rig because sometimes it could be up to eight pistons, just different types of like pistons going all over the place. And it's always going to be the same process. You're going to be using point, you're going to be using aim, and highly recommend that you make locators for these because just like a locator, I'm going to press command G or control G on Windows. It's basically the same thing as a null, which is a group. The only difference is I can't select a group in the viewport. I can only select in the outliner and the locator as well. You can select it and actually visually see it, which is much better whenever you're actually using it for a rig and you need that visual representation. So that's how you go about actually rigging a piston. See you guys in the next lesson.